Um, so as some of you have learned that as of um, February 1st at midnight, uh, Group Health Cooperative became Kaiser Permanente of Washington, and GHRI now has an even more complicated name of Kaiser Permanente Washington Health Research Institute. So um, henceforth, we will be known as that. So I'm gonna talk about a project about um, building a family network. I am a clinician at Group Health Cooperative, and I see the patients that are identified and emerge and how um, group health has many intact families within its system um, and how we can use these intact families to um, distribute information about genetic risk. So when I think about building a family network, I think about why we do this, and that is to provide information to family members um, who are, have risk for their own health care People share in families for different reasons, but one of the big reasons is to get support. If you get diagnosed with a genetic condition, if you get diagnosed with breast cancer in a woman, you typically, the first person you talk to is your sister. And the correlation of how you share genetic information is based sometimes on the severity of the disease. There are certainly barriers of sharing information, genetic information, including family dynamics. And then we have regulatory information, including HIPAA versus our duty to warn. So um, we published a little paper about our experience with three families from Emerge 2 who had incidental findings. Um, two of them turned out to be VUSs, one the LDHR, um, patient, um, we vetted this um, change, and because it was um, it was consistent with disease, we were concerned that it was part of um, what was going on with the patient. But in each of the families, you can see the proban is identified by the arrow, and who we were able to test additionally in our cooperative because they were group health members and what impact that had on their health. The first family is an SCN 5A family, and while um, the proban and her two children did not have a significant phenotype, the grandson had had seizures when he was given medications for ADHD as a child, um, and as an adult when he was put on antidepressants, also got a seizure disorder and almost died when falling in the shower. He ultimately was found to have a significant um, cardiac rhythm abnormality and he's being considered for an implantable device. I don't know if his seizures were because of the arrhythmia. There's some literature that SCN 5A also is associated with seizure as seizures as some of the other SCN genes are. But um, those are the three families that kind of prompted this work. So we put in for an, a supplement, and we were awarded a supplement that has been entitled the Family a Network Approach to Assessing the Trickle-Down Effect of Genetic Testing. My group will no longer let me use trickle-down effect. They make me call it the family network. And it's being <laughs> led by Nora Henriksen, who is a PhD at Group Health Research Institute, now that long Kaiser Permanente name. And the specific aim of this project has been to explore the feasibility of health systems-led identification and a communication with family members of the eMERGE participants. The patients that we're including in this study are only members of Group Health, um, Kaiser per Permanente Washington, who are enrolled and emerge. Um, these will be, at Group Health, we're returning pathogenic, lightly, likely pathogenic, variants of uncertain significant for colorectal genes, and negative results to the participants. So all of our participants who um, have consented will get some kind of result from us. And Group Health and Kaiser are integrated healthcare systems, whereas both insurers and healthcare providers, we want to try to identify people at risk so that we can appropriately monitor them um, and provide medical care. So to explore social, ethical, and legal feasibility, we are going to be conducting 
semi-structured interviews with approximately 20 eMERGE participants before their results have been returned. We're going to cover topics like what they consider is the definition of their family. We want to ask them if they have a preferred role, if any, for group health cooperative for, actionable, for sharing actionable results with likely affected family members who are also group health um, Kaiser Permanente members. Um, we are asking them, do they want group health Kaiser Permanente providers to contact relatives directly with the proband's consent and how they would feel about the electronic medical record being used to share information predominantly between providers. We're also asking them questions, you know, specific to pediatric cases. If you have, if you're identified to have a significant gene in adulthood, how would you like that information to be stored and how would you like that information to be provided for children who are at risk? We're using a couple hypothetical scenarios. We're using vignettes. One's a colorectal cancer vignette because the focus of our eMERGE project, um, we have about 1,000 of our eMERGE participants have colorectal cancer or polyposis. And we also wanted another condition that was an actionable gene that would span lifetime, and so we picked Marfan syndrome. We will also collect contact information for relatives identified by each participant. We will attempt to identify relatives based on first name, last name, and date of birth um, provided by the eMERGE participant. We will, not access, <laughs> we will not access relatives' records, but we're just trying to see if we can build um, a family network based on the information a propan has provided us. We're looking at the legal ramifications of this work. We're in contact with our legal um, consults within our own institution. We have talked to Bob Wilden about his process at N NHGRI where he developed the family history tool. And uh, Malia Fullerton, who is here, is assembling a team of legal experts from the eMERGE sites to address issues including duty to warn um, versus HIPAA across the eMERGE sites. Our other ongoing work is a family talk trial where we are um, trying to prove communication with patients who are at risk for colorectal cancer um, that's being headed by Deb Bowen. That's part of our Emerge 3 project. We are developing dot phrases so that when we see all of our Emerge patients in clinic, we're able to consistently draw on the information regarding family network and who else um, could be at risk and whether they are in group health. Um, we're looking at look, um, what family networks have looked like for our, some of our other populations that we have been following consistently in genetic services. And we're, we're, um, there's a development of an eMERGE-wide family network project being led by Janet Williams and the Return of Results group. So this is our eMERGE group um, at University of Washington and Kaiser Washington and the, um, the group that's right um, involved in the supplement, which is Nora, Gail, Malia, myself, and Aaron Scroll. Thank you.